Hello and welcome back to the Hughes Enterprises channel. Today I'm going to show off my incredibly specific and useless collection of U.S. Civil Defense High Range Gamma Survey Meters. And I think I just lost the majority of the audience. Uh, so first off, what is U.S. Civil Defense? Uh, it's a government organization uh, that in the 1950s and 60s was preparing the U.S. for a nuclear war with the Soviet Union. Uh, they had over 100,000 fallout shelters, and they were stocked with radiation detection equipment, such as these Model 710 survey meters. Uh, these are not Geiger counters. Uh, they measure very high levels of gamma radiation, uh, the kind of radiation that you would only find in the middle of a nuclear reactor, after a nuclear explosion, or if a very spicy uh, nuclear source uh, for nuclear medicine got on the loose somewhere, which luckily does not happen very often. Uh, the level of radiation these detect is so high that these are completely useless, even if I was able to power these on, which I'm not going to because they use these obsolete 22 volt batteries. So why do we have model 710 survey meters? Uh, in the event of a nuclear attack, um, the Model 10 uh, 710 survey meter would be used to take accurate measurements of the current radiation level outside the fallout shelter. You could plug those numbers into this uh, radiation dosage calculator and figure out exactly how many days or weeks you would need to stay in the shelter before radiation levels had decayed to a uh, safer level than they were when you measured it initially. So let's get into uh, the differences of these models and uh, maybe see if you would want to fight with the five other people that collect these and make your own collection of CDB 710 survey meters. All right, 710 Model 1, the Eltronix Model 1, the holy grail of radiation detectors. There's only four of these that I know of. Two of them are in museums. Uh, one of them sold on eBay a few years ago in terrible condition. And then I purchased this one, which is the second nicest one that I know of. And I purchased this from a retired civil defense director. Uh, this was made in 1954. There's somewhere around 500 of these made. And they're a, a very interesting survey meter. Ion chamber design, as are all of these. Uh, this one takes five of these 22 volt batteries which is kind of excessive. All right, CDB 710 Model 2. Now these guys are made by Jordan Electronics, made in 1955. Rounded case design. Interesting bent metal handle with this little aluminum cap that does absolutely nothing. Now these are High range gamma survey meters, as I mentioned, they measure in terms of rankins per hour from zero to 50 rankins per hour. Uh, later survey meters like the CDB 715 that replaced all of these uh, measures up to, I believe, 500 rankins per hour. I'd have to go check them out. But uh, yeah, levels of radiation that if you were holding this survey meter detecting, you're also being exposed to that radiation, so you don't want to stand there for too long. Uh, these Model 2s are fairly common. They're probably the most robust and uh, have probably survived better than these later three models. But uh, I usually see five or six of these come up for sale a year on eBay, and they sell in the 40 to $60 range. Uh, pretty neat instruments. Uh, my favorite of the uh, 710 series, uh, besides the Model 1, which you just can't find. All right, 710 Model 3. This is where U.S. Civil Defense cheaped out and uh, started using plastic for their survey meters. Uh, these cases are terrible. 1950s plastic was super brittle and fragile. And 60 years later, it's even more so brittle and fragile. Uh, the models 3, 4, and 5 are almost always broken in some way. Uh, the model 3 has a problem. 
because it doesn't have a easily accessible battery compartment like the other models. Like on the Model 2, you have these nice metal clips that are retained. Same with the Model 1. Models 4 and 5, you have these kind of terrible clips, but they're at least easier than screws. So the problem with the Model 3 is since it was slightly inconvenient to find a screwdriver, people just left the batteries in these and they corroded all the electronics out of them. So this design was quickly replaced with the Model 4 CDV710 gamma survey meter. Uh, again, with the terrible fragile plastic case, uh, but they put on these handles that are super, super flimsy and break off at the slightest touch. Uh, most of these have handles that are broken off. Um, recently, I've seen a whole bunch of these that are brand new in box. Like this one is brand new in box. Came with the original batteries from the factory. And um, handle is intact. And these ones sell for somewhere in the $30 to $50 range. They're much more common than the uh, Model 2 and 3 but not really that great, incredibly fragile. Uh, the Model 5 is probably the most common of any of the CDB 710s. It was made in the largest numbers, and they're usually all brand new in box or have hardly ever been used at all because this model was rendered completely obsolete within two years of manufacture when the CDB 715 came out. Uh, the CDB 710 only measures up to 50 Rankins per hour. It uses the 22 and a half volt batteries. Um, it's just not a very good instrument compared to the CDB 715. But all of these were rendered obsolete at that point. Um, but for whatever reason, uh, the Office of Civil Defense and then later FEMA stocked the models four and five up until the mid 1980s. Uh, the rest of these were scrapped in the 1960s. And uh, it's pretty unusual to have a full reference collection of these. I think I only know of uh, a few people in the world that can say they have every model of CDV 710 gamma survey meter. Well, that's a look at uh, these five. If you want to see the other meters in my collection just let me know or if you have any questions about these uh, I can answer any questions these all have the circuit diagrams inside so if you want to try repairing yours I can provide you with that but uh, thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing